Welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, here with the amazing Rebecca Liston, <laughs> who you can find over at RebeccaListon.com. Uh, she is an intuitive business strategist. So let's talk for just a moment, Rebecca, about exactly what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> So uh, basically what that means is I work as a coach and consultant with business owners, um, usually small businesses, um, they might be bricks and mortar, they might be um, online businesses. And um, uh, because I use my intuition so much to sort of guide decisions, um, hence we stuck the word intuitive in front of business strategist so that everybody knows that I'm uh, not just thinking my way through things, but feeling my way into them too. That's awesome. So you, you kind of tap energetically into a business correct, and help the business owner make decisions from there. Is that right? Exactly right. And we track into the business owner, we track into the business, and we also track into the person's clients or client base or um, customers to also be able to find out from an intuitive perspective what they're looking for and, and what they need and want, which is ridiculously helpful too. Absolutely. I mean, it's like having superpowers to like zoom in on what yeah. your client wants and needs. Um, That's exactly right. Awesome. So tell us a little bit how you got into that line of work. Sure. Um, so I have like many people and many guests, I think on your show have had kind of this long and winding career path that seemingly doesn't make any sense. So mine came from healthcare to, um, to the natural medicine, which I practiced for many, many years and then realized that, hmm, I was good at my relationship with my clients, but not so great in terms of as being a clinician and actually prescribing medicine. So I um, realized that running the business and working with the people was the thing that I loved. So I went into coaching and then I had to find a way to bring my intuition into it. And so I did some training uh, with Lori Wilson here in Canada and um, learned to, to do business intuition so that I could add that tool to my tool belt for um, when I was in my coaching relationships um, with my clients, I could tap into uh, intuition. So like I said earlier, it's not just my answers aren't just coming out of my brain, but I can use my intuitive um, sort of superpowers as well to sort of get good solid answers for my clients. And so it's been a long and winding road to get here, but, um, but it's been a really good one. So 16, 16 years I've been self-employed now. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and the self-employment has allowed you to create a really what I would categorize as rich life, right? You yes, it's time. very, it is. You know, I, it's funny because ever since you and I started talking about this concept of being creatively rich, I really, the really land, it really resonated with me that whole, the whole concept of it, because to me, as you and I've talked about it, so you know this um, to be true about me. I've never really thought about it as the numbers in the bank account that made me wealthy, right? Like it's all the rest of my life that makes me feel very lucky and um, very blessed. And so it's, so yes, it's having money in the bank. Yes, it's having money saved. Yes, it's, you know, um, making sure I'm, you know, working to pay down debt, like those sorts of things are important to feeling that way. But yeah, it's so much about lifestyle and entrepreneurship has really allowed for that as a single parent of two young girls. So I've been self employed for 16 years. And in that time, I've had two babies, well, pre three pregnancies lost a child and have two children. Um, and have raised them on my own. So it's, uh, it's allowed me, that's that creative part, right? We're creative with our money. We can move it and shift it and manipulate it and then use it to serve our needs. Um, and so one of the big things for me around that has been the, the lifestyle that I've been able to create for myself and using money to, to help support that. So tell us a little bit about that lifestyle. What does that look like for you? Well, I think, as you know, one of the most important things is the lifestyle that I've given for my kids, right? So being able to have my children in a private school has been a huge piece. So my children attend a Waldorf school, um, which is a very different way of um, education. And it's, it was a huge commitment to make and an important commitment to me personally to, to be able to support them in that. So uh, my oldest daughter is in grade seven, so she'll graduate that school after grade eight. And my youngest is still only just finished grade three. So, um, and they started when they were, you know, 18 months and two years of age. So we've been there a really long time so far. So one of the big things for me in terms of my lifestyle and, and how I feel like I've been able to use money is to, is to foster creativity in them, right? Because that type of schooling really builds on their creative muscles and their learning to learn and, and think for themselves and their independence and that sort of thing. So that's been a big piece. And then I think, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day about how lovely it was that 
um, you know, when they were really little, um, you know, the school day is long for a kid, right? Like, so they would be there from, you know, quarter to nine in the morning till 3.15 in the afternoon. And I really jammed my entire work day. Like I was only working, I would drop them off at school. So I would start work around 9.15 and I'd be done at 2.45 so I could get there to pick them up. And as, as they got older, they were then able to manage being at school a little longer. They would stay later in aftercare. We're lucky that our school provides that. And so I just kept extending it and extending it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit to um, as they got older and they could handle it. So again, that's creatively using your time, right? So what I used to be a very compressed day, now I have a little bit more, you know, stretch to it. So I'm still, you know, taking them in the morning to school and I'm still not starting my day till 9.15, 9.30, you know, and I go to pick them up by 4.15. But I've, you know, I've managed to find myself a little extra time as they've gotten older. And that's, being able to play with that, right, and use that to our advantage has been really, really huge. And I see that during our, you know, the school year, but also during the summer holidays where, you know, here I am right now, I'm at home, my kids are home. This is a new thing for us. Last year, we went away for the month of July, and I rented a house up north, which is also a thing that, you know, you can do um, that I've created for myself, you know, from a money perspective and a time perspective to, to be able to be up north for the month and so that I, then I crammed my day, you know, I would, I was up, I'm up early in the morning anyway. So I would start my calls at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning and I would just work solid right through till one. And then we had the whole afternoon and evening together. So I think playing with time, like time, you know, you've heard me say this so many times, right? There's two great forms of energy that impact our businesses and the time is one and money is the other. And they go together to me, right? Like we can manipulate and twist and make them both work for us in ways that, um, the ways that serve um, our families and ourselves. Well, and I, I think that there's so much power and, and this is one of those things that, that a lot of times I think women in business specifically overlook is that when we give ourselves that breath of time off of, and it works with money too, right? It's, it's, totally. it's all the same with like, okay, I've got this breath of money. I've got this, like the, this cushion, yes. this, this extra, um, yep. then it actually, we can get so much more focused and get so much more done in a short period of time because we messed around in the mountains all day, right? Right. And then came back and got work done. So can you speak a little bit about your experience with that, about how how you've been able to manipulate time? Yes. So one of the things I do, and I know um, you and I have discussed this as well over the years, is I have been an advocate and I'm like hardcore on the whole concept of week four, and so generally what that means is that I work, I only book client time and meetings three weeks out of four every mm-hmm. single month. That's allows me one week of every month to, as you were saying, breathe, exhale. So even though I may not be, you know, playing in the mountains every time, sometimes I am, um, it does give me an opportunity to, like, to exhale, like to let it out, right? Like I go and I work hard for three weeks and then in that next week I can relax you know, I can breathe out and I can recharge for myself. And it also gives me an opportunity to work on things that maybe I haven't gotten done. So actually, so this week, um, sorry, in May, um, during week four, it was an opportunity for me to pack up things because I'm moving offices. So I, you know, I could use that time for that. Um, This week, I'm on a week four. uh, In my June week four was like graduation at the kids school. So we were busy doing different things for the school community. And you know, and then sometimes in week four, we might go to an event or do something like that. So I can take that time and again, use it for the things that are not quite those like hour on hour appointment times, like I would normally have during my, my typical work week. Um, And that the spaciousness of that is huge for me. I've been doing that for oh, like at least seven years, if not longer at this point. And it's, it's the best gift I have ever given myself. And, you know, in terms of financially, how that's had, that's completely had an impact because I do feel like I am more focused and my body is so knows this, right? Like my body is ready to work like a bat out of hell if I needed to in those three weeks, because it also, my body knows it gets that week then to recharge and replenish. So I feel like I'm not always pushing up against this wall. It's like, as if my whole system is geared now to having this break because it's been, you know, it's, it's my life. It's been my habit, right? It's what I do. Um, So I think that's created more efficiency for me. Yeah. Yeah. And And frankly, like most humans, because we are human, 
the more time we have to do things, the more time we take. Right. Right. So I think that's also a big deal. Like I've learned that about myself early on. If I have six hours to do one task, it will take me six hours to do the whole thing. But wouldn't you rather just play for five and get it I would one? really just rather because <laughs> honestly, that's, you know, that's all it really needs to take. Right. So yes, absolutely. And you've also, um, you've included some padding for yourself in, in your mornings too. Yes. So tell me about that. Yep. Yeah, so um, I'm sitting here petting my dog as we have this conversation. So um, morning time is like kind of, uh, it's fairly precious to me. And the other thing that's really important to me about my mornings is that I don't ever wake to an alarm. So depending on the time of the year, my body like wakes up with the sunrise, depending on what it is. So currently I'm waking up at about five o'clock in the morning, 5.15 when the morning light comes in. And I make full and complete use of that time in a way that is just all mine. So sometimes we're at the dog park by six, you know, and we're walking or we're out for a walk. Sometimes not, it's the, not necessarily the park. Sometimes we're just out for a walk, but we're out and about. And if it's crummy weather, then I'm curled on the couch reading a book or I'm journaling or, you know, even sometimes I'm even reading the news. Like it doesn't, to me, it's not about what I'm doing. It's about the fact that I have that buffer time in the morning. Um, and then come winter when the sun's not up so early, I feel as though, again, I have had this extended period of time in the summer months to, well, in spring and to fall too, right? Like, it's not like it just happens that it's five o'clock in the morning suddenly. Like, there's, it's a gradual process. So then in the seasons, as my body is winding down, I sleep a little later, it's okay. And I don't feel as though I need to be up at the dog park at five because it's not daylight yet. Like, my body then wants to sleep till seven instead. And so I just do. And it naturally, I kind of follow this lovely rhythm. And so it's, um, I feel like it's, again, I've had this, this grace to be able to work my life in a way that like just fits how I feel inside, like what my own natural rhythms are. And, you know, in those winter months when I want to be asleep, I'm asleep. And in the summer months when I'm up late, like I work late during the summer because because I'm awake and I want to work and I have all this energy. I'm like, well, then I have to make the full use of July. Like, Sometimes I will, you know, work all day, have my time with my kids, they'll go to bed and I'll work for another couple of hours at night because, because I can, because I want to. And I know that come winter, when 4.30 hits, I'm out. So I figure to me about like, I can find and seek balance in that. So, you know, I plan um, my life accordingly around that too. And I think, I think that that's just such an amazing gift to not chastise yourself for wanting the extra sleep or craving yes. the extra time. Um, yep. I've been horribly guilty. <laughs> of well, where- yeah. And honestly, I'm uh, like, it's taken me a while to get there because, but I, I sort of feel like I was forced to get there because, because I couldn't do it. Right. Like I couldn't stay awake or I couldn't get up early in the winter. And I was fighting with myself around it for a while because I thought, well, what's wrong with you? You know, there's, you read these stories about all these people who are magnificently successful and their secret to their success is that they're up at 4 a.m. every morning. And I was like, oh, screw that. Like, good for them. I'm glad it works for them, but it doesn't work for my body. In the winter, I need to sleep. And in the summer, I'll happily be up at five. Right. But not in the winter. So I'm like, hey. Half the year, I can be, you know, incredibly, 50% incredibly successful then. <laughs> Whatever. So yeah, do, exactly. you, do you, um, do you adjust bedtime then too on the sun? Yep. You I stay do. up a little later in the summer? I stay up later in the summer and in the winter I am um, asleep really early. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Like, yeah. Like sometimes, <laughs> like I'm sometimes asleep by 8.30, quarter to nine. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. That- that, that feels like a gift on its own. Like, yes, it is. Again, for me, like my body and everybody's different, but I just, I don't know. I try to follow the rhythms of the seasons, like in uh, as much as I can, right. Even in the, the food that I eat and the amount of sleep that I get and that kind of thing. Cause I just feel like it serves me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> well, Rebecca, thank you so much for being on the show today and it's been a uh, pleasure. sharing your schedule and kind of how, <laughs> how you let that flow in a way that feels really abundant. That's great. It does. It, I think I love the idea about the idea, like you just said about how it feels abundant because it really does. And I feel like then when you feel abundant in your time and you feel abundant and spacious in your life, it actually creates space for financial, like it, to me, it just all goes together. 
right? All the good things. Yeah. All the good things go together in that way. So, so there's, that's my theory. Anyway, I'll, I'll stick to that for now. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Thanks, love. Bye for now.